We're going to take a look at the rate of climb chart and the time, fuel, and distance to climb chart. Now both of these charts are based off of your best rate of climb, which is your VY speed. And what that speed gives you is the most amount of altitude per given time. Now often when we climb, we climb by a different value on your airspeed indicator, just your normal climb range. But if the scenario arose where you took off from a runway and it was necessary to maintain your VY to clear um, mountains or something on, uh, along your journey, you may choose to maintain your best rate of climb. Again, that's the maximum amount of altitude achieved per given time. On the rate of climb chart, they only give us one weight choice, which is maximum gross weight, 2,300 pounds. And the pressure altitude column, you would have to calculate your pressure altitude. In my given example, we just have standard pressure, 2,992, so the altitude we do choose would also be the same as our pressure altitude. It also tells you your climb speed. So, for example, if we took off from this airport, which is 1,048 feet, then our climb speed would be between 72 and 73 in order to achieve this rate of climb. Next, you'd have to look at the different temperatures. The temperature in our example is 23 degrees, which is pretty close to 20 degrees. So we would probably say that our rate of climb would end up being somewhere between 650 and 755, so somewhere close to 700. Now keep in mind with all of your performance charts, they made those when the aircraft was new. So I would never completely trust that. I would probably choose the um, worst case scenario, which was, would be the um, 650 instead of interpolating between the two. The next thing is, now that we understand about ra what rate of climb feet per minute we would obtain, we'll look and see how much time, fuel, and distance we would use. So they again only give us one weight under this particular performance chart, and then it has our pressure altitude. In our scenario, we are going to take off from a field elevation of roughly 1,000 feet, and we intend to cruise at 6,500 feet. So we have to go halfway between the 600 or 6,000 and 7,000. And next is our temperature. The temperatures listed here are standard temperature, which is 15 degrees at sea level, and you lose two degrees per thousand feet in a standard lapse rate. The temperature in our scenario is 23 degrees at our takeoff airport. And standard value was 13 degrees, and we're at 23, so therefore we are plus 10 above standard. It also, again, shows us our speed, which we would maintain um, when we uh, begin our climb, we would maintain about 73, and as we get closer to the top of our climb, we would have to maintain closer to uh, 70. And then it again gives us our rate of feet per minutes as we're climbing higher and higher. And then it gives us our time used to climb that high, and then the fuel used to climb that high, and finally the distance. Since we took off from 1,000 feet, and we're going to 6,500 feet, it says that if we went to 6,500 feet, we would have spent 11 minutes doing so. But because we already started at 1,000, we can subtract that one off of there. So where the time would have been um, 11 minutes, it's minus the one because we already started at 1,000 feet. So it's saying that it would take us about 10 minutes in order to climb to our 6,500. The fuel burn, it says that we would have burned somewhere between the 1.9 and 2.3, so we'll call it 2.1, but um, I would have to subtract off the 0.3 since we started at um, 1,000 feet field elevation, so we would get 1.8 gallons. And then distance traveled, it says that we would have um, traveled about 14 miles minus the 2, so it says we would have traveled a total of about 12 nautical miles as we were climbing to our 6,500. Now don't forget to pay attention to the notation section. It says to add 1.1 gallons for fuel for engine start, taxi, and takeoff allowance. 
but I usually round that number up a bit to be sure that I always have enough fuel. So I would probably add uh, 1.5 gallons to be on the safe side and call my total fuel burn at about 2.3 gallons in order to arrive at my 6,500. Next it says that my mixture should be leaned above 3,000 in order to maintain my maximum RPMs to achieve the performance specified in this chart. Next it says increase the time, fuel, and distance by 10% for each 10 degrees above standard. And remember our standard was 13, but in our example it's 23, so we are plus 10 degrees, so therefore we would have to add 10% to each one of these. So if we add about 1, it would be 11 for our time, and for our fuel we would add you know, about, um, we'd make our fuel about, might as well just call it 3 gallons and our distance, we'd add 1.2, so you might as well call it about 13 nautical miles. Now again, keep in mind that these performance charts were when the aircraft was brand new, and you always want to be generous on choosing the worst case scenario or rounding your numbers to a more realistic value to keep yourself safe.